Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Instability of Capacitive Loaded Operation Amplifiers, Explanation and Demonstration by Simulation. Please note that uh, there are some two videos which are kind of related to the subject matter of this presentation. And here are the links, and these links will be available at the YouTube page of the present video. Why do we need a capacitor at the output of an operation amplifier? Well, the reason could be that uh, we expect uh, short pulses and the amplifier may not be able to supply the current. So therefore, we'd like to put a capacitor at the output in order to uh, provide the charges uh, of the load. Here we have two simulations of two amplifiers. Actually, it's a, the same amplifier, LT1219, same amplifier from the libraries of the, this is LT Spice and this is P Spice. And uh, I'm showing here a capacitor which is loading the output. This is the uh, resistor is now one milliohm, so it's like a short. I'm going to put a resistor later on, so therefore uh, I've uh, provided the space for it. The same thing goes here. We have one microfarad and uh, we have a DC of uh, 2.5 volt in the two cases and then a step of 0.2 volt. Supply is 5 volt of this amplifier. It's a rail to rail uh, amplifier, the input and output. And the 100K that I've put here just to drain some current, so we'll be with some current at the output, not just zero. So we have a capacitive loading in the two cases, and here are the results of the simulation. This is a time domain simulation, a transient. You see here heavy oscillations. Uh, this, these are the original pulses coming in. Uh, this is 2.5 volt. We can see it here, 2.5 volt. Now, as you can see, there is a difference between the uh, outputs of the two simulation. Here we have heavy uh, oscillation. Here we have overshoot quite a bit, but this is much more damped. This shows that, um, well, the two models are not exactly the same and perhaps these are two different type of ampli amplifiers. I, I really don't know, but the, the fact is that the responses are not the same and we're going to see it later on. So this just uh, demonstrate the fact that uh, uh, SPICE models are not uh, absolutely correct. And uh, especially if you are looking at some parasitic phenomena like oscillation uh, that I'm doing here. If I change the capacitor to 5 microfarad, this is the loading capacitor, uh, we see that uh, we get heavier oscillation, lower frequency. We can see it very nicely here, the LT Spice 2. Uh, they are not exactly the same, but, but it's like very similar phenomena in the two cases. If, however, I'll put a resistor here, and a resistor here, decoupling the output of the amplifier from the capacitor in the two cases. I can see that uh, the outputs now, uh, in the case of the LT spice, it's very nice. It's kind of coincides with the input. In the case of the P spice, it's still, there are some overshoot, but certainly not heavy oscillation as uh, we had it before. It's something entirely different. And again, we see the difference between the two models, the two simulation models uh, of this apparently the same amplifier. So why do we have these oscillations? If we look at the transfer function, the A open loop of a operational amplifier, typically with a internally compensated amplifier, we're going to see something like that for the gain. This is in dB, the gain V out to V in. This could be 100 dB, 120 dB. And uh, this goes down by about 20 dB per decade. Usually here there's some approaching another 
pole here. This is a single pole here, but here we might be approaching other poles. So typically you'll see a phase behavior for the A open loop that looks like that. For this pole we see 90 degree lag, and then toward the crossover we see a little bit additional lag with a phase margin remaining which would be usually around 50, 60, or 70 uh, degrees in typical amplifier. This is A open loop. You can get the A open loop very easily by simulation. And here is the way to do it. Uh, now I have decoupled the capacitor. I've put here 100 meg resistor. So this is like open circuit here. Uh, I still have the bleeding uh, resistor. But now I've put here an AC source. This is an AC analysis. And um, around a 2.5 volt operating point. Now the idea of this, this is explained in one of the videos that I've linked at the title page. Without going into too much detail, let me just explain that this method introduces a perturbation here. So we have a signal coming out here goes all the way to the amplifier, passes the amplifier, so if we have here the A open loop, and then if there is another uh, transfer function, uh, we pick it up, and then it comes back here. So therefore, the ratio between the voltage here, I call it the out amp out two, okay, the voltage here, and the voltage here is in fact, in this case, the A open loop. In the general case, it's the loop gate. Here, the beta, the feedback is one, so basically the loop gain is the A open loop. And here uh, we can see the result. We see the amplifier. This is the gain. This is now LT spice. This is the gain. This is the phase. And here we see the 90 degree shift due to the pole at the lower frequency. It goes all the way down by about 20 dB per decade. And as I have said, there's some wingling here. Uh, we're approaching other poles. So therefore, we might have actually zero in a pole uh, for the compensation. And uh, therefore, there's actually an increase and then a drop so that they eventually we get a phase margin of about uh, 60 degree. p spice gives us about the same. We see in both cases, we have 120 dB open loop low frequency of DC gain, and then the same drop, 20 dB, same wiggling here, but you see the phase is a little bit different, which means that the models are not the same. Phase-wise, there is a difference here. There's a more pronounced peak here uh, than here, and this explains uh, why the behavior of the two models is not exactly the same. Now we have an amplifier which has an A open loop, but the amplifier has an output resistance. This is the inherent resistance at the output of the amplifier, representing the total output resistance. And due to the resistance and if we load it by a capacitor, we have an RC here. This is the transfer function. So now the loop gain, the total loop gain, is the A open loop multiplied by this, which makes this loop gain looks like this. We have another break here. This is 40 dB per decade, and therefore the phase now goes 90 degree due to the pole here, but then for the next pole, it goes another 90 degree, and of course, it will approach zero, so we have a zero phase margin, and if there are some more uh, legs of phase shift or, or parasitic capacitor in the circuit, uh, it'll oscillate. So this is the reason why this uh, circuit oscillate with a capacitor. Of course, it depends where is the RC. If it is at very high frequency, that is a small capacitor, then it wouldn't matter that much. And by the way, if it is a very large capacitor, you move all the way here, and then you start dropping here at 20 dB per decade, uh, which is also okay. So very, very large capacitor also don't pose a problem. If you, if you use them. But normally, if the capacitor is you know, in, in between, then you have a problem of, a, of instability. 
So how adding a resistor helps to stabilize the system? Here, this is the original amplifier, this is the output resistance, and this is the added resistor uh, that is uh, resting the oscillation. So now we have an added transfer function, here it is. This is the network, this is the original output resistance of the amplifier, this is the added resistor, and the transfer function now from here to here, that is from here to here, this is the, you might say, beta, is uh, this expression here. We can see here a pole and a zero. Pole is at a lower frequency and then a zero. This is a lag lead network. Now the nice thing about it is that this region, and this region, there's no phase shift because the uh, lag here is canceled by the advance of the zero. So therefore, if you now have this network involved, then you shape the A open loop by this network. Here we have indeed minus 40 dB per decade because of this portion here. But then since this is flat, it goes back to minus 20 dB per decade. And consequently the phase drops down getting close to perhaps at zero but then it goes up again so at the crossover point we have a decent phase margin so this is the working of this uh, resistor which is helping to improve the phase at the cross section uh, region so i'm now doing a simulation Looking at the loop game, this is now for the loop game, as I've explained before, for two cases, one with no resistor, this is just one milliohm, and one with a resistor, and again, this is now the feedback, so this is now the loop game, the loop game involved the A open loop, plus the trans transfer function from the inner output through R out to this point back here. And then we have this uh, decoupling uh, resistor, you might say, uh, for the uh, capacitor. So here are the results. And this is for the case we had oscillation. Now this is no resistor, and this is with 1K resistor. So in the case of the, this is the PSPI simulation. For the case of the uh, no resistor, we see the following. We see the A open loop, and then we see the break due to the internal resistance and the five microfarad capacitor. This is this break here, which causes an additional phase shift, bringing it down, in fact, in this particular case, in the piece five uh, case to the minus 40 degrees phase margin, clearly unstable case. So this is why we have very heavy oscillation. Here, situation is much better, of course. This is the 1K. As I explained, we see the loop gain here is just about all the way minus 20 to be per decade, because here we have a pole and a zero which cancel each other, we don't see them. We see here the weakening, the original uh, phase shift or additional zeros and poles of the amplifier. And uh, we have now a nice 60 degree phase margin with the 1K. So this shows very nicely how the 1K uh, improves the loop gain and in, in particular, of course, the phase margin. Now for the LT spice simulation, it's very similar, of course, the phases are a little bit different. Again, with no resistor, we see here, in this case, we are just approaching phase margin of uh, zero. This is the crossover, zero dB. Here we see the break of the uh, RC. So we see 90 plus 90 and plus something because of the additional poles here. And with the 1K, again, we see here a nice minus 20 degrees per decade and uh, 90 degrees here 
and then this additional phase shift here brings up 260 degrees so it's about the same as we had it with the piece pipe so this explains uh, the situation with this resistor it should be pointed out that in this circuit now with this resistor included uh, the gain to the output of the amplifier would be about one because uh, we have a closed loop here beta equal to one and uh, so it's like a uh, unity gain amplifier however if you look at the transfer function between the input to the cap this section actually is open loop it just receives the output here and then there is an RC circuit and clearly uh, the transfer function between here and here between the input and the cap uh, will be uh, dependent on the breakpoint of this uh, RC circuit so let's have a look at it uh, by simulation and here I have it this is now between input and the output of the amplifier this is the original you might say gain one has a little bit of an overshoot because of the 60 degree uh, phase margin and um, we are okay having a bandwidth of, of about uh, I don't know uh, 20 30 kilohertz this is a low uh, bandwidth amplifier now if we look now at the transfer function between the input to the cap obviously we see the break now of the RC and having a 5 microfarad uh, capacitor with 1k resistor of course uh, has a breakpoint here of uh, I don't know uh, say tenths of a hertz so this is something to keep in mind that uh, when you have a capacitor and you put a resistor then obviously here this is not very well uh, regulated and also um, transfer function between input and output uh, is the function of the uh, breakpoint of this RC circuit so this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future Thank you very much.